but but the only resist this, so this is this is the modern struggle the modern struggle is the lone individual the lone individual has to stand up to the weaponization of uh, struggle sessions via social media has to stand up to the weaponization of food through proce- processing and junk food the weaponization yeah. of uh, the libido, you know, into uh, or the, yeah. the sex drive with uh, unlimited pornography, um, you know, the, the, weapons, the weaponization of uh, alcohol, drugs. You know, how many how many Americans are, do you think are on mind altering substances of some kind or another? Near right anybody, now, right? <laughs> right now, yeah. Well, I just mean I just mean in general, like prescription oh, yeah, drugs. There's... You know, they're taking SSRIs, they're taking Xanax, or or they're sm- or they're living in an area where cannabis is legal and they're smoking cannabis and saying, "Oh yeah, this, this is this is great, everything is fine," right? Yeah. But uh, th- there are more drugs being taken right now to calm the body, sorry, to calm the mind, than are being taken to calm the body, right? So we're just we're just under constant assault, and it's I don't I'm not I'm not saying it's some evil conspiracy theory thing. It's a natural outcome of abundance, ironically, right? We've just taken all the uh, things that used to be scarce in society, and thanks to uh, the miracle of free markets and capitalism and science and technology, we've just created massive abundance. It's the shadow uh, but, side of abundance, exactly. Exactly. But the solution yeah, but, to it isn't, uh, what did they, you know, when they, what's, what's the word, uh, what did they do with booze in the 20s? What's that? What's the word for that? Pro- prohibition. There you prohibition. go. Prohibition. Prohibition is never the answer, obviously. Yes, it's censor- uh, prohibition is, censor- is censorship, right? It's it's just yeah, physical exactly. censorship there you go. So with the same so, problems. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I had a tweet that I put out where I said the modern devil is cheap dopamine, right? And that was, uh, again, linking a bunch of words together that normally don't see together and trying to um, use words that everybody knows but doesn't normally use. Like most people won't use the word you know, dopamine in a speech, <laughs> in, in, in conversation. So that was a good tweet. I like that one. And that was one of the <laughs> exa- well, that was one of the times where I got a good response on Twitter. I actually got some really useful feedback. Uh, and right. there, there was a lot of like crazy feedback. But one person wrote it and said, actually, the devil has always been cheap dopamine. And I was like, hmm, I think you're right. Like you go back to all the biblical edicts yeah. about, you know, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. It's like, don't go get that cheap dopamine and then get someone pregnant and create a battle and yeah. uh, or, or spread diseases. So it, he, that whoever responded was correct. The devil has always been cheap dopamine. Um, mm-hmm. But what's interesting is the cost of the, the dopamine has collapsed by orders and orders of magnitude, right? So someone needs to sketch this out, but there's probably a graph that you could draw where you have you know time on the x-axis and you have the price per unit of dopamine, however it's measured on the y-axis. And this is, you have to be a little clever about how to define it, but you'd probably find that it looks like uh, you know, you the don't have transistor. to leave bed anymore. The thing that, you know, you maybe back <laughs> in the day, you'd have to get up, you'd go to the Coliseum, you'd go watch someone get hit with a rock, whatever it was, like throw yourself down a hill to make yourself feel dizzy or something. You literally don't have to get out of bed. You can open your eyes, pick up your little uh, portal device thing. And exactly, boom, you're there in so many of them. In like most yeah, so the, the, there's the uh, there's the uh, philosophical question of the bliss machine, yeah. which is... Uh, if you if you can put an electrode in your head and uh, stimulate it, and it's all just neurons and chemicals, and you can st- stimulate neurotransmitters so that uh, you can just live in infinite bliss. You will just feel never-ending bliss. Would you do it? And most people will say no. There's some people who will say yes, and those are unfortunately the, the heroin addicts in our society, right? The people on the street who are homeless, really more of a – we call it homeless and mental illness, but it's really more of a drug abuse problem, right? Um, yeah, definitely. And so, so there's just a lot of people doing heroin, and they're living inside the bliss machine. And so most people will say, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I want meaning in my life. Well, it's okay. Well, I'll put an electrode that gives you meaning. Now you have bliss and meaning. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. I need variety. Okay, here you go. Bliss, meaning, and the feeling of variety. There you go. How, how do you feel now? <laughs> right? So you can, you can take this to reducto ad absurdum, you know, but maybe that's what we're in now, right? The great simulation, the great programmer slash God. We just created ourselves yeah, well. a bliss, meaning, and variety machine to entertain ourselves. So you kind of get, end up back at square one. But it, it's and just fun to reason through the, the whole thing. What would you do if you were God? You end up back at the simulation. You end up back at uh, exactly. what's his face? in the matrix saying i know the steak isn't real but it's delicious yes exactly yeah that, that, that he was a rational one uh, yeah you know I, I, because it, well neo, <laughs> neo is irrational in the matrix on two levels you know one is that he willingly <laughs> goes into a uh, worse uh, society he's living in zion in rags you know instead of in uh, he didn't really get a choice know, he didn't. I don't think he. yeah he didn't get he a choice fair enough fair, <laughs> fair, fair enough and, and, and yeah, that's oh, wait, it was rational because he was he, 
Yeah, but another way was rational because he was truth seeking, right? So he he was like, okay, I'd rather live in the rags and eat gruel in uh, in truth than uh, you know eat a steak and drink wine of lies, right? Which, by the way, is not the choice most people would make. Oh, but hey, um, but guess but what? The, he had the thing that he had, mm. and this is the thing. There, I on and off uh, quit drinking and substances and things over the years with varying degrees of success. I finally did it a couple of years ago because I made an album in which uh, I sampled. Jordan Peterson and Theo Vaughn talking about booze and Peterson's like, you know, it's not prohibition. Uh, you need a replacement for the reason you're doing it. You need an adventure. And what, what Neo had was an adventure. And when she, when she put that adventure into your life, whatever it is, that will replace those other things. That is, that is a very good point. The adventure replaces the comfort. So in that sense, he sort of chose meaning for his life as opposed to just creature comforts. Very good point. Yeah, yeah, and I think the second part where I think Neo went off the rails uh, is that he just assumed that Zion is a real world. Once you've been shown that you're inside of a simulation, <laughs> how, do you, where do you, how do you know where it stops? The simulation's all the way down. It's, it's, right? it's actually the existential end of your life because now you're never going to be satisfied. In fact, the only way you could be convinced you're not in a simulation is if uh, you're in something that doesn't render anything, like a plain white room or a plain black room forever, a.k.a. death. So uh, I think if you if, if you were shown to be in a simulation, if someone came up to you and proved to you that you were in a simulation, then the philosophical endpoint of that is mental death. Or it depends if you accept it. If you go, okay, what's the argument? I think I think I heard Elon say something along the lines of that he quite liked simulation theory as an idea because it means it could be hacked. I don't know if he actually said that or if I well, he, he, that. He, yeah, he's, the problem is that these people are agnostics. No one's a true believer, right? If he truly, <laughs> truly, truly 100% believed he was in a simulation, then I think he would behave very differently. Or the same way, if you truly, truly, it's like, look, it, it, a, a lot of, we, we all live our lives as agnostics, right? If you truly believed you were mortal, then you would know that your life is going to end and this is all going to zero and you'd live very freely and very happily. At the same <laughs> time, if you truly believed you were immortal in whatever sense, you had an immortal soul or you had some kind of a um, you know, non-dualistic interpretation where it's like all awareness, then you would also live freely and at peace because you would realize that you're immortal. So none of this should bother you. But everybody's uh -huh. an agnostic. Everybody actually doesn't know. Yeah, that's true. Apart from those, and that, that's, I think, a good definition of those few people we hear at, about across history who do remarkable things. It's people who've let go of that. The Buddhas? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Buddhas and the Jesuses and the whatever it is. is, is, is right. Those people. All right. Well, I think that's probably a good spot to end it, unless you got anything else you want to chat about. We've, we've oh, there's a million. Over. 